against Bitcoin. It's going up forever. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Because they expect well, because they want to sell it eventually, desirable. Michael. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people who are, uh, yes, sure, some people pass it on to their children. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. So let, I me, get, let me say it a different way. Okay. People that use fiat currency as a store of value, there's a name for them. We call them poor. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Simply Bitcoin Live, your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, code breaking news, culture, medic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most watched daily Bitcoin live show on YouTube, Rumble, and X. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin. I just, look, I, I mean, Michael Saylor is not only talking the talk, right? So we played you guys that clip when it broke, you know, it literally broke the internet, broke Bitcoin Twitter, better said. Uh, we are still in our echo chamber, even though we're breaking through it. Uh, but also something to keep in mind is that not only does he talk the talk, he walks the walk, he doubled down, he continued, he continues his speculative attack on the dollar. <laughs> MicroStrategy announced literally like two days after uh, they announced uh, their first proposal, uh, but they just announced a new proposed private offering of $500 million of convertible senior notes. This is in addition to the 800 million uh, offering of convertible notes, which they offered in the same week. And by the way, so it was, they he offered the $800 million offering. He had that media interview. And then the next day they announced the $500 million offering. Michael Saylor, what an absolute Chad, not only talking the talk, but uh, walking the walk, and this is a speculative attack on the dollar. Like it's 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 crazy that he continues to do this. Uh, but I mean, look, he's very very uh, convinced, and he's very convicted, as we all, because we know that Bitcoin is you know the best money that has ever existed in the history of mankind. Also, breaking news: Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto, ruled by a judge, uh, and the the summary was. It was, there was, there's nothing open to interpretation anymore. Uh, I'll read you guys the exact quote from the judge when we get to the news segment, but basically said, look, you did not write the white paper. You did not invite, you did not uh, invent this technology. This is vindication uh, for not only Peter McCormack, but also our boy, the space cat Hoddle Knot, uh, that have been persecuted by uh, Craig Wright and co uh, in order to silence them. Uh, for for you know basically saying that he isn't Satoshi. I mean, it, it, Satoshi that inv invented Bitcoin, right, or discovered Bitcoin, however which way you want to see it. You would think that you know uncensorable money. You would and you would think that the creator of uncensorable money would use the state, would use lawfare to try to silence someone else. I mean. You know, it doesn't quite make sense. So this is, you know, again, shout out to Hodlnot and McCormack. They were attacked financially, uh, millions of dollars in legal fees. Uh, so for them to finally be vindicated, uh, this is a this is a this is a big win for Bitcoin and big win for Bitcoiners, right? I I I I believe that you know Craig Wright uh, was an enemy of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, attacking fellow Bitcoiners. Uh, you know, for for differences of opinion and then trying to use lawfare to silence them. That's not cool. So we'll get to that also. And then I also want to focus on the so-called TikTok ban bill. Uh, there's two sides to this, right? So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to connect it with what's happening in Canada. Uh, supposedly there's a draft uh, Canada law that would force social media companies to quickly remove harmful content. Now, the problem with this is who gets to determine what harmful content is, right? So let's say you're the political party in power and your political opponents are, you know, posting some things that perhaps make you look bad. Uh, you could say that's harmful con content. They've done that in the past before, right? You've heard this with, you know, the whole hate speech, uh, mis misinformation. You've heard these things before. And that's exactly why, you know, the First Amendment is structured, how the First Amendment is structured in the United States. Because the founding fathers realized that, like, look, 
if government gets to decide what speech is acceptable and what speech is not acceptable, government is going to use that as a political moat to protect themselves. So very interesting discussion. And of course, we have two legendary Bitcoiners, also good of mine, of course, I'm about BJ Ditcher and Brandy, uh, Brandon Gentle. They are the host of the Political Bitcoin Hour Twitter Spaces. Uh, BJ is the author of Honking for Freedom, also a freedom fighter himself. He was part of the Canadian truckers protest. Shout out to BJ. And of course, Brandon is the head of marketing for BTC Trading Cards and my legendary co-host, who's always optimistic. He has a giant smile on his face today, which means it's going to be an excellent show. The one, the only Optimus Fields. How you doing, Opti? I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm doing great. Life's great. Life's beautiful. Here we are. We get to be Bitcoiners. We get to watch clown world burn around us while we build a better world. And uh, yeah, man, I, I'm excited for this one. You know, I I love BJ and Brandon. And every time I talk with them, we always go into the weeds on, on all kinds of awesome conversations. And, you know, today's culture is going to be one of those where I know it's going to get spicy for everyone in the chat. I know this is going to be Nico's favorite conversation, too. The importance of Bitcoiners getting political or whether it matters or not. And uh, I mean, also, considering we we're talking about Canada, I, I feel like we couldn't have a better guest than BJ on the show today as well. And man. Just, just super hype, super hype to be here, man. Hey, Nico, we we got the best job ever. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're we're pretty lucky, man, to be able to talk about Bitcoin every single day. But that wouldn't be possible without all our fans, all our viewers, and of family, course, family out there, family, like straight up family, and of course, uh, you know, all the sponsors that make this show possible. And of course, appreciate you guys buying the merch and the super chats. Holy cow, we got so many super chats yesterday. We're blessed, and we appreciate y'all. Anyways, BJ, how you doing, man? Uh, bro, last time I think I saw you, we were we were in Miami together. You're in my. You should be in my. Miami soon, right? Maybe, maybe, yes, no, maybe so. I'm in, and uh, I will be down yeah. the next dinner again. I know you're not sleeping at all with the. Uh, so why do you you don't deserve an hour out for drinks with myself, brother? And I hope you're all well. <laughs> oh man, well I'm excited. I'm excited to get to hang out with you again. And uh, yeah, well, you know, I am I am working on fumes. Uh, it's it's crazy. But shout out to my wife, uh, Internet Sophie, because she's been absolutely crushing it, being a mom, just, you know, being on top of everything. Anyways, Brandon, how you doing, man? I think last time we crossed paths was at Unconfiscatable Epic Conference and uh, good to see you again and happy to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks, Nico Opti, having us on. This is uh, an absolute blast. And yeah, looking forward to some conferences this year with you guys and uh, pro probably Bitblock Boom coming up. And uh, so really excited about that. And uh, man, it's going to be a good show. Yeah, man, I'm excited, excited for you guys to be on the show. Guys, if you're enjoying the show so far, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps with the algo. So if you're enjoying the show, just smash the like button. Anyways, before we jump into the show, I do want to give a very, very special shout out to our flagship sponsor. And of course, I'm talking about the Bitcoin well. Bitcoinwell.com is the best place to build your automatic self-custody Bitcoin stack. That's right. You can't buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin well unless you're going to take self-custody, which perfectly aligns with the Simply Bitcoin ethos, the separation of money and state. The revolution is millions of individuals taking self-custody and we want to push a platform that is self-custody by default. And that platform, of course, is BitcoinWell.com. They're also having a contest, which is live right now. It's called the Bitcoin Jackpot Contest. Currently, the jackpot is at uh, 2.5 million Satoshis. If you sign up to BitcoinWell.com today, make yourself uh, your first purchase. Uh, you have an opportunity to enter the jackpot. If you're an existing user of BitcoinWell, go to the reward section in your account and uh, you can enter into the jackpot and not to mention they're also giving away a stamp seed sor storage kit uh, they're giving them away every single day this week so if you sign up today to bitcoinwell.com you have an opportunity to win a stamp seed storage kit if you guys want more details for all of this go to bitcoinwell.com slash contest this is the platform that I personally recommend let's make self custody the default in the U.S., go to BitcoinWell.com today. All right, everybody, let's get to the news. We have a lot to talk about. Let's check it out. Here we go. 
the Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seed's do-it-yourself kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamp seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to hodl your bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul stamp your seed on stamp seed all right ladies and gentlemen i made it incredibly easy for you guys to get yourself a stamp seed kit or a save my bitcoin for multi-generations uh yeah yeah get yourself a stamp seed uh bitcoin seed phrase storage kit and you could use promo code simply by the way you get 15 percent off anything on their site uh, but if you head over to bitcoinwell.com slash contest today uh, and you sign up, uh, you might have an opportunity to win one for free. So definitely go check out bitcoinwell.com slash contest and check out Stamp Seed. Anyways, at the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is $70,390. Sats per dollar, $1,421. Block height, $834,685. Blocks to having 5,315. Having estimate April 19, 2024. Total Lightning Network capacity 4,375 Bitcoin. Capacity value 308 million US dollars. Realized monetary inflation 1.74%. The market capitalization of Bitcoin is currently sitting at 1.39 trillion US dollars. Bitcoin versus gold market cap 10%. Grand scheme of things, Bitcoin is just getting started. Okay, so uh, one of the themes in this show that we talk about, right, is the separation of money and state, right? The peaceful revolution. But what started this revolution? What started the fire, right? What kindled that fire? What started it? It was the internet. And the internet, what, what the internet did, what the internet enabled individuals to do um, is basically circumvent the gatekeepers of information. It disintermediated information. It, dem it democratized the process of broadcasting, right? So all of a sudden, you know, this didn't exist 15 years ago. Any person could buy themselves a microphone and a camera, create, you know, an account on the multiple different platforms. Now you can, you know, create an account on Noster and uh, you literally can't be banned, period, right? And you could broadcast to the world directly peer to peer, right? So I can broadcast to you. Um, I can make my thoughts known, my speech known, and, uh, you know, can't really do anything about it. Uh, the governments are having a hard time doing something about it. And of course, this is kind of like throwing them into a frenzy because they've been used to operating in a world where there's been a handful of leg legacy media institutions and, you know, there's been many, many examples throughout history where those legacy media, media institutions that you, you know, would trust, so to speak, uh, it's come out that they weren't exactly so truthful. And that's why I believe you have, you know, the most popular broadcasters in the world are not legacy media. They're individuals like Joe Rogan. They're individuals like Tucker Carlson, of course. And you can make you can make the case that they're exactly not but that that, you know, they have their own biases. But I would like to believe that in a world where everyone is able to speak their mind, let the free market of ideas get to decide, you know, what ideas are good and what ideas are bad. I don't think, you know, go powerful government bureaucrats should be uh, should have a monopoly on that. Anyways, uh, so look, so with everything I just said, connect it with this. Right. And, you know, of course, Joe Biden, the current president of the United States. Uh, he grew up in a world where, you know, there was only a handful of legacy media institutions, right? So, you know, they're able to get away with stuff like this. So let's check out what he has to say. So now we have among the lowest inflation rates of any country in America, and still, we're still fighting to lower it even further. So, now so like, not to mention the fact that you can't really understand what he's saying, right? We have one of the lowest inflation rates of any country in America. I mean, so first of all, the actual <laughs> statement itself doesn't really make sense. Um, and then the... 
the other statement, which is the idea of like, okay, yes, the, the inflation has been lowered. Okay, great. But just because inflation, the, the, the rate of which your money is losing purchasing power is decreasing, that doesn't necessarily equate to prices going back down to where they were before the spending spree that was justified because of the pandemic. Right. And of course, they blame the war and they blame the supply chains and they blame everything in their mother. Right. Uh, so, yes, they're able to kind of get away with a lot of these, you know, a lot of these things, because, again, they've been used to somewhat controlling uh, the, the information rails. Um, and then this leads me to my other point. Right. So governments all around the world in, in the in, in the EU, uh, in Canada and the United States are kind of trying to do something about, I mean, again, it's kind of like a losing battle, right? Uh, the the best, uh, you know, quote that comes to mind is you can't stop ide an idea whose time has come. Uh, you know, the printing press and how that completely changed everything. The internet's changed everything, right? But of course, the old world is adjusting to that. There's a bit of a, there's a little bit of chaos uh, because of that. But this is one of the latest attempts, and this is kind of scary, right? And if you pull up like CNN or something on Instagram in Canada, it will literally tell you like, we can't show you this uh, because of some like taught law in Canada, which is absolutely crazy that we live in this type of world. But anyways, the headline of this article is Canada law would force social media companies to quickly remove harmful content. Who gets to decide what is harmful content? And bringing this back to the United States, yesterday, uh, the so-called uh, TikTok ban, uh, the TikTok, uh, the TikTok bill was passed. Uh, and here is uh, Representative Mike uh, Gallagher. And by, by the way, this was a bipartisan thing. So this is Republicans and Democrats. Um, and, you know, here's a quote. Uh, that he said during his speech, he said, becoming the dominant because TikTok was becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. Now, of course, there's two sides to this and I'll get to it, but I'm going to get to the Bitcoin side first and then I'll pass it on to BJ to uh, talk about the other side, the other perspective. So here's CK. He was uh, the the he was. He was basically running Bitcoin magazine for a while. Now he's with the Human Rights Foundation. He said, this TikTok ban is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's more about control than it is about TikTok. Here's Odell. This is a screenshot from Noster. I'm assuming this is uh, the primal app. Uh, he says, the TikTok ban bill going through Congress right now will give government insane power to restrict speech. At the same time, Section 230 protections are about to be neutered by the Supreme Court, which will add an insane amount of liability to centralized platforms, inevitably increasing censorship. Restricting free speech in America has bipartisan support among our corrupt political class. Noster is about to have its moment to shine. We need to be ready for billions of new users. So I think that's a really good point from Odell. But uh, BJ, we were talking kind of before uh, you had a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of a different kind of perspective on the on the TikTok bill, because, again, it's not so black and white. Right. Uh, TikTok, you know, it, guys, if you ever go on a shorts feed on YouTube or on TikTok before, you know, it, you've lost like 30 or 40 minutes of your time. It, the platforms are literally like designed to hijack your dopamine res receptors and you just to start scrolling. Now, the problem is that the content of which they show in China is actually like productive content, right? It's like it's wholesome content. It like it encourages you to, you know, go and, you know, do exercise and do this. And, you know, you could say that the content here in the U.S. isn't exactly, uh, you know, the healthiest content for, you know, the younger generation to consume. So I, I see kind of two points here, BJ. Point number one is, OK, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't put it past the government uh, that is definitely feeling the pain of social media and getting, you know, fact checked in real time and people talking peer to peer. Um, I wouldn't put, put it past the government to take advantage of all these parents up in arms to, you know, pass a bill that, you know, gives uh, the executive branch this crazy power just to kind of, you know, restrict certain types of websites, like you said. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't think that the CCP has the best interests 
of, you know, uh, of the American public, right? You could even say they're adversaries. So, uh, BJ, what's your what's your thoughts on all this, uh, you know, the censorship of speech? And, and again, guys, this is a Bitcoin show. The freedom of speech is the front line for the battle for Bitcoin. If, if you don't think that they're going to be okay with you speaking freely, they're definitely not going to be okay with you transacting freely. BJ? Wow, that's a lot to uncover in uh, just a couple of minutes, but I'll try to make it short. I mean, look, I am as free speech, anti-censorship, uh, absolutist as humanly possible. Uh, as you know, I had all my bank accounts frozen, my credit cards, my lines of credit, absolutely everything frozen because uh, of the of our desire to speak and speak out against what the Trudeau government was doing. And by the way, it's not just the Trudeau government. It's not about left or right. This is about top versus bottom. The political establishment who thinks they're living in the 1960s of unidirectional media, and they don't want to engage in the open discourse and debate with bidirectional media, which is the nature of the world that we live in today. Now, I think we're conflating. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of nuance here, but I think we're conflating two separate things. So firstly, on the TikTok side, uh, I'm very sympathetic. I think we all are. Those of us who understand, who have a background in communications, uh, some degree of persuasion and marketing, that TikTok has been turned into a cyber weapon within the U.S. and it targets younger people who are easily brainwashed and influenced. That's why TikTok is banned within China. So it's banned within their own jurisdiction, but they're utilizing it for degeneracy here. I have a sister-in-law who is very high up in public health, and she was telling me over, uh, you know, they have Christmas dinner. So over their Christmas dinner, she says to me, you wouldn't believe when we see the text messages from kids in middle school. She said, do you know what they talk about? And I said, no. She said, they obsess over one thing and one thing only, their gender. They don't know if they're a boy. They don't know if they're a girl. They're gender fluid. Should they change their gender? Should they get puberty blockers? Where can I get puberty blockers without my parents knowing? She said it's bored. It's on the point that it is obsessive behavior. She said they don't talk about cars. They don't talk about sports. They don't talk about dolls. They don't talk about the things that kids would traditionally have spoken about at that age in previous generations. So that needs to be addressed. However, what we've seen once again the political class stabbing all of us in the back by inserting a poison pill in this bill, which gives the president absolute powers for censorship, which I'm not in favor of either. And I'm, I'm really shocked and surprised that it went through with the poison, poison pill. On the Canadian side, uh, for the online harms bill or the online harms act, what that is, it has not yet passed. I think it went through first reading, if I'm not mistaken. Remember, you have a parliamentary process. It is designed uh, for, obviously, for people online, not limited to online. And this is what it says. There's two aspects that are very, very dangerous of this, okay? Very short. It says, section 320.1001, Everyone who can, anyone who commits an offense under this act or any other act of parliament, if the commission of the offense is motivated by hate based on race, national or ethnic origin, language, color, religion, sex, age, mental or physical disability, sex orientation or gender ideology or, ideology or expression is guilty of an indictable offense and is liable to imprisonment for life, for life, which is 25 years under Canadian law. This is the part that Scott Adams read a few days ago. Then there's another aspect to it, very important that ties into it, very short. 810.012, a person may, with the attorney general's consent, lay an information before a provincial court judge if the person fears on reasonable grounds, whatever that is, that another person will commit an offense under Section 318 or any of its subsections, an offense under Section 320. What does that mean? That means, Nico, I think you might commit some hate speech in the future that I find offensive, so I'm going to drag you 
to not the regular court system, but the Human Rights Commission, which Jordan Peterson made very famous. It's a parallel court system, not based on objective facts, but based on feelings and emotions, not ruled on by a judge, but by a justice of the peace, and it's all subjective. And I can, in the past, many comedians had been dragged through the Human Rights Commission and been issued fines, but Section 17 was removed about 10 years ago. They wanna bring it back and give the Human Rights Commission the power of imprisonment for life for saying something that somebody doesn't like. I think those, that is very, very Orwellian, and that's also separate from the, the TikTok issue. Have I made like, my case out well? 100%. You've, uh, you laid it out uh, in, in such an amazing manner. And just to give that context, uh, and you know, I was basically trying to paint an overall kind of overarching, overarching narrative just to yeah. kind of show everyone where we are in history and the separation of money and state, the great disintermediation that was caused by the internet. But you really dug deep into the details and the uh, the nuances of both those elements. I really, really appreciate that, BJ. But yeah, Nico, man, this wait, is... Nico, go ahead. What happens when Bitcoin is considered far-right hate speech? Oh, Nico wanted to teach me about Bitcoin. He wanted to recruit me into hate speech. He should be arrested. Let's take him in front of the Human Rights Tribunal. 100%. And then, you know, what, 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 uh, when are they going to say that, you know, and you're already starting to see this, and I don't know if we're going to have time to cover this today, guys, but we're going to cover it on Friday at least. But uh, some news coming out of Nigeria. Nigerian authorities blame Binance for 70% Naira uh, devaluation and uh, moved to issue arrest warrant against CEO and uh, some other news. Also, JP Morgan, Bitcoin surge could raise concerns at the Fed. So you kind of see where this is going, right? Where they will use Bitcoin as, uh, you know, the, 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 the excuse as to why fiat is failing, the excuse as to why, you know, the, these, uh, you know, the, the, the welfare state is breaking down. And uh, you can see them going after Bitcoiners, right? And this is something, again, that it, it, it's not only obvious, you, you kind of start to see the ominous clouds in the distance, but this is something that was predicted in the book, The Sovereign Individual, right? You know, if you have people that have been living in uh, in this world for, in this very specific type of world for a very long time, right? So yeah, BJ, thank you so much for breaking down the nuances and the details. Uh, but this is what it's all about, guys. Keep up the pressure. Uh, your number one weapon in all this, is this is not a kinetic war. Uh, your number one weapon here is just the truth. You know, get people informed because the reality is that a lot of these politicians take advantage of uh, a lot of people that perhaps are not informed. Like they're not fully aware of what is actually going on. They're still consumers of of uh, what I call the controlled media. Um, anyways, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Brandon. Brandon, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, your guy, you guys host a uh you know a, a a space is called the political bitcoin hour so i'm assuming uh, you guys have uh talked about this somewhat yeah we we just talked about this yesterday uh wednesday at at uh, one o'clock eastern time is when we we do this we go for a couple hours and join up with toxic happy hour actually but uh first off really quick congrats to you and sophie by the way i didn't say that earlier on the little one nico so congrats there but yeah this is um you know, it's the whole like, you know, people saying billionaires, I forgot who it was this week, but they were saying that you know, billionaires should, you know, not put a smile on their face. They should be just giving away their money just wherever and whenever with no strings attached. And uh, you see this this ruling class, you know, whether it's Rogan or Musk or Saylor, so really pointed at these people. But you see, you, you know, we have to join the political discourse. You, you just have to. And it's you have to overwhelm the system. And these centralized powers are not used to being talked back to, period. They, you know, think of think of some of these families. They're hundreds of years in power, hundreds of years. They've never been talked talk back to in their life. And you just mentioned it earlier, Nico, and you too, BJ. But these people have never heard anyone, anyone. I mean, for hundreds and thousands of years, they just you would just go to jail. Someone did anything. I mean, you can look through the Bible, you can look through history books, and it's it's throughout the entire thing that you just jail them, you'd kill them, you'd cut their head off, whatever it was. It's like, okay, get out of here, bud. And now, for the first time in human history, with Bitcoin with separation of church and state, but then now the separation of money and state and now the separation of media and state, they have this real threat to their, you know, oligopoly or whatever you want to call it, this, this power structure that they've built and they, they don't know what to do. And that's why it's going to get 
worse before it gets better. And, you know, and obviously in the spaces I was joking with you guys earlier that you need to bring it back. But we used to say all the time, you know, like you don't none of us want to be martyrs, but some people will be. You know, we need some martyrs in society. We need, you know, like we talked about Hoddle now. We talked about Peter McCormick already. And these things happen and they're going to continue to happen until we push this political discourse to a point. Because, and, and BJ says this all the time too, is the Breitbart uh, quote of politics is downstream from, from culture. And you have to keep pushing the culture and doing what we're all doing here every single day, overwhelm the system, more podcasts, more blogs, more uh, TV spots, whatever it is, whatever everyone can do to continue the, the narrative, because this stuff is real. The TikTok bill. I mean, this is this is why we started political Bitcoin hour. This is why we started Bitcoin trading cards as well. And what we're doing there, because we have to get the kids. We have to pull them away from a screen somehow. How are you going to learn? They're not learning it in government schools. We all know that they're not learning it on TikTok. They're not learning it on Instagram. They're not learning it in this digital world. Like you said, Nico, these the, the dopamine hits you get from it are incredible. So how do we pull them away from this and learn in a different way? And and that's why we started some of these initiatives and some of these things to do something differently. I mean, you look at the, whether it's a TikTok bill or Bill C-63 in Canada, the, the Dame mining tax bill, omnibus bills. I mean, you go on down the list. It's it's endless and it's it's almost it's speeding up, right? Because they're the the drowning man in the water and they're gonna get crazier and crazier as you're as you're trying to rescue a drowning man what is he doing he's he's grabbing at you he's pulling you under the water and that's a part of that you know then they fight you stage we're in right now 100 percent, 100 percent. also shout out to breitbart absolute legend a man before his time guys if you see breitbart's interviews from you know 10 12 years ago he predicted a lot of the things that are coming true now so uh shout out to breitbart anyways opti um uh, what are your thoughts on this, brother? Yeah, I'll oh, go quick. Also, speaking of martyr, uh, Opti is not a degenerate anymore. He told me that he's not a degenerate up. anymore. <laughs> so we are using, um, I am calling him Saint Opti uh, from now Always on. Always has been. Moving Always forward. has been. Uh, so when All right, Opti... Hold on, let's kick him off. Well, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. <laughs> when, I, when, when Bitcoin hits 150K, Opti will become okay, a priest. He texted okay. me last no, time. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. Anyway, anyway let's get back oh, to the, the topic here. Nico has always got to troll me on the show. Um, first and foremost, you know, I totally agree with everything that BJ and Brandon and Nico was saying. Um, it really, I think, is an important point to make that this is the culture war happening in real time. And we know that, like, I don't know if you guys watched that Mike Benz interview with uh, Tucker Carlson a couple of weeks ago or last week or so. But he said something in there that we say all the time on this show, and he has a like an encyclopedic memory on what's going on, names and figures. And something Nico and I always say on the show is like the establishment wasn't ready for the Internet and social media and all of us having these conversations and spreading the truth and spreading the signal. And so now it's them trying to fight back. And the same thing is happening with Bitcoin, where they're losing control of the money and it all goes hand in hand. I know someone in the chat was kind of like, wait, I thought this was a Bitcoin show. What are they even talking about? Well, I know we, we talked about in the chat, but freedom of speech is a Bitcoin issue. Like if you think that you can't talk freely on the Internet, what makes you think that you're going to be able to transact freely? These things go hand in hand. And the establishment wasn't ready for Bitcoin to basically free all of us transacting, sending money where we want without them being the middleman. And now they're trying to scramble and control it. So we're seeing in real time that what the Internet did to information Bitcoin is doing for finances. And, you know, Bitcoin is code. Bitcoin is speech. And so the more they try to trample on communication and the more they try to corral information, the more you know that we are winning and that that we have to continue to spread the signal and then just like touching on the TikTok stuff because I don't want to rehash what you guys were saying but personally it just kind of always goes back to that meme that a, a government will not let an emergency go what's the saying I, I forget I'm uh, it, it, it's a Churchill quote and it's yeah. like never let a crisis go to yeah waste. never go exactly and so you're seeing that now we have a new boogeyman you know the the it was russia for a little bit and now it's becoming china again and so they're they're aiming this as a way of like protecting american citizens from china and you know like i don't like tiktok it's a necessary evil for us we're, we're posting stuff over there on tiktok 
But you're seeing in the wording of this bill that was passed that it's going to be just wholesale for any website. It's starting to get aimed at exactly what BJ was saying about in Canada, that if you are saying things that are going against the establishment, then they have full reign to basically shut you down, fine you. And so, again, this is just part of that culture war going on where they are losing control, or rather, in my opinion, they have lost control of information. They have lost control on the monopoly of the narrative. And now they're trying to scramble and find new ways to ensure that their narrative is getting propagated because all of us on Twitter are just, you know, the the Twitter, uh, what's fact check? You know, the Twitter community notes like they can't get away with just propagandizing people. And now they're trying to figure out ways how to use the courts and the laws to basically push all you guys back into the box because they've lost that control. And so freedom of speech is a Bitcoin issue. Bitcoin is literally code. It's ones and zeros. It's letters. And so the more they try to control information, not only do I know that we're on the right side of history here, but the more I know that they're scrambling and they're very concerned about us having these conversations and hence why we do our show in such a certain way so that YouTube doesn't nuke us. So guys, we know what's going on. We see the writing on the wall, but it's kind of one of those necessary evils where we got to go meet people and try to plant these seeds of freedom and these ideas of freedom in people's minds and show the hypocrisy so they understand what is actually at stake. It's literally all at stake right now. It is Bitcoin or slavery. Oh, beautiful. Beautifully said. By the way, shout out to the 1,147 live viewers on YouTube and X and, of course, our buddies over at Rumble as well. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to smash that like button. Really, really helps with the algos. Before we move on to the culture, I do want to give a shout out to our merch oh, because if not... Not wine a kiss will kill me guys we dropped new merch and if you guys want to help support the show it really 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 helps guys it helps us stay independent go to simplybitcoin.com check out the new collection uh we just we teamed up with a bitcoin artist his name is asanoa and uh there's different uh different things we dropped the peaceful bitcoin revolution shirt uh the orange pill it's not an orange but it's a like gold pill with a bitcoin logo bitcoin gold uh snapback uh dad hat and of course we got ladies merch as well that was requested by our audience so if you guys want to help support the show really really helps stack some sats first uh but if you can uh Check out our merch, simplybitcoin.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen. Anyways, guys, let's get to the news. We have a lot to talk about. Let's check it out. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your, into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the Passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. Guys, take back your financial sovereignty. And one of the ways that you can do that is by getting yourself a hardware wallet. Of course, we recommend the Passport by Foundation devices. I personally use this as one of my hardware wallets. It's awesome. It's completely open source, beautiful design. It's incredibly easy to use, especially with the Envoy app. Guys, check out the QR code on your screen or check the link in the video description, the podcast description to take you to the Foundation Devices website where you can get yourself a Passport hardware wallet. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, quick ETF update. We've been doing this every single day. Uh, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see where MicroStrategy stands. And this number is going to go up. I think Michael Saylor wants to get to that 
one percent number. Uh, he's currently MicroStrategy's MicroStrategy holdings currently stick stand at two hundred and five thousand Bitcoin. And uh, Fidelity, wow, man, Fidelity and BlackRock. Fidelity currently stands at one hundred and thirty-two thousand, and BlackRock two hundred and twenty-three thousand bitcoin it took microstrategy three years to accumulate their bitcoin stack it took blackrock you know a matter of months right and that institutional interest continues to go through the roof you could see it with the lines you know again guys they wouldn't be stacking if it wasn't their customers buying it right so uh that's that's kind of a big deal Anyways, a uh, quick update on uh, this this saga. This man, this has lasted a very very long time, a uh, very very long time. And and shame on you know Craig Wright and uh, you know and and Calvin uh, for uh, for doing this. For and again, look, you can make a claim, right? Uh, but you know, there's there's these awesome things called cryptographic proofs. You can sign. Uh, for addresses that, you know, that, that a lot of people believe belong to Satoshi to prove that you are Satoshi. Number one, I don't think Satoshi would do that uh, because I think that part of Bitcoin's mythology, uh, part of Bitcoin's power uh, is the fact that the ruler stepped away, the creator stepped away, not the ruler, the creator stepped away from his creation and left it to its own devices. I don't think it would be a good idea if people knew the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, I think that would put a target under his uh, on his back. I think that's the reason why he disappeared. People would start to see the flaws in the human being or the group of human beings that are behind Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, rather than focus on what was left, what was created, which is Bitcoin, right? And again, because it's anonymous, because Satoshi's not here anymore, because he's basically disappeared, uh, we're all Satoshi in a way, except for Craig Wright. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, it, it was, you know, it was a tragedy. It was a tragedy what happened to Hodonot, and it was a tragedy what happened to Peter McCormack getting uh, lawfare, basically trying to silence them for calling Craig Wright not Satoshi. And again, that could have been an opinion. Uh, Craig Wright had multiple instances to prove that he's that he you know he he as he he is who he claimed he he is or he was. Uh, but that's over now, and we you know we we we've tended not to be so blunt and open about it. Uh, you know, on simply Bitcoin, but th this is a judge now saying that uh, Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. Not to mention the fact that. Judges in three different jurisdictions, Florida, the United Kingdom, and I think uh, Hadonat's trial was like in Norway, I believe. Um, but in three of those jurisdictions, the judge in, you know, some were a little bit nicer than others, but they basically said that Craig Wright was dishonest in a lot of his testimony. Right. So in three separate jurisdictions, you know, multiple judges have said, you know, Craig Wright is being dishonest. Now it is so point blank. It is so blunt in this latest ruling that it's undeniable. And the judge made it undeniable. Right. So this is what Hadonat said. The judge just ruled from the bench. Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. Further findings of fraud will come in the written judgment. Welcome to law. Welcome to law is a line that Craig Wright famously used uh, to prove, you know, he's saying, listen, we're going to sue you out of existence. Welcome to law. You know, sailors jumping in saying Craig Wright is not Satoshi. And here is the actual uh, quote from the judge itself, from the judge himself. Uh, and here is, of course, Jack Dorsey, you know, fellow Bitcoiner uh, posting the quote. And he says W up top for uh, for win says, quote, I will make certain declarations which I am satisfied are useful and are necessary to do justice between the parties. First, that Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Second, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym, uh, pseudonym, opti. how do you say that word? Pseudonym. <laughs> pseudonym. pseudonym. Holy cow. All right, guys, forgive me. English, my second language. Satoshi Nakamoto in the period of 2008 to 2011. Third, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And fourth, he is not the author of the initial version of the Bitcoin software. Any further relief will be dealt with in my written judgment. I will extend time for filing 
any appellant's notice until 21 days after the form of order hearing, which will be appointed following the hand down of my written judgment. And I ask the parties to seek to agree an order giving effect to what I have just stated. So, I mean, look, you can't be more blunt than that. Like, there is no doubt left there. There's just no doubt. There's no, like, anything left that could be interpreted in a, in a you know, in a different a different light. Uh, blunt, the, 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 the judge was, was pretty blunt. Like, he said it. Like, this guy did not create Bitcoin. The white paper, the early firms of the software, this guy is not Satoshi Nakamoto. Full stop. Period. Right. So again, congratulations to uh, to Hoddle Knot. Congratulations to Peter McCormack. Uh, they, you know, they took the blunt of this, and I'm sure that there's other Bitcoiners that were pursued as well. Uh, congratulations to them, and this is a big win for the Bitcoin community. BJ, what do you what do you think about this, man? Well, I think lawfare is one of the biggest problems in society right now that often gets ignored. It's ignored by all our politicians. Because it's just another form of censorship. I've been through it myself. I'm going through it right now. You know, the truckers and I, about 400 plus of us, have been slapped with a $450 million lawfare harassment suit by people who are tied to the Trudeau government or the, the Liberal Party. I talked about it on trigonometry when I was interviewed on them in the UK. So this is a very, very serious problem. And this is also why... We do need to get involved in politics. I know Bitcoiners hate politics, and I get it. Politics is garbage. But Paracelis, the Greek philosopher, said, just because you don't take an interest in politics doesn't mean politics won't take an interest in you. So our means of fighting back is putting the pressure of governments and legislators on people like uh, Craig Wright. And I know many of us are anti-statist. I get that. But you got to use the tools that are in front of you, because if not, we're all just going to be the victims and we're going to be the ones that are targeted permanently. We need to fight back. A hundred percent. Beautifully said. Also, I want to give a shout out to our first super chat of the day. Uh, we from Thomas Hara. Uh, there we go. I'm having trouble, so I'm going to read it. I'm having trouble pulling it up for some reason. Uh, but Thomas Hara said, support the show, guys! Exclamation mark. Appreciate it, Thomas. Thank you so much for the super chat. Anyways, I'm going to pass it on to Brandon. Uh, Brandon, what's your take on this, man? Like, you know, we, we've all been, you know, the, the, we, the, the, there's been a couple sayings, right? We're all Satoshi, but we're all hot or not. And that was a way to kind of, you know, show our support as the Bitcoin community to rally behind the space cat while he was being personally attacked. Man, Craig Wright sent private investigators to dox the guy. Okay, like clearly this is someone who values their, uh, you know, their anonymity. Uh, that's why they use, you know, the the handle Hoddle Knot, right? Uh, not their personal name. And, you know, they, they spent money to try to find out who this guy was. And, you know, last time, I think one of the things that they said, they, they showed up to his to his work, to his job. Like, it's pretty crazy what happened, right? Like, this is this is this is justice. And I'm really glad that this had somewhat of a of a of a happy conclusion. Brandon, what's your take? And then we'll move on to Opti. Yeah, and someone's in the chat there, you know, saying like, why, why, why do we need a judge to tell us, you know, what the truth is? And we don't, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, it is a part of the vindication in a way. And it's, you know, for people that were involved, obviously, Hoddle not uh, Peter McCormick and, and many people that were involved just indirectly uh, and all of us to a degree, right? It's one of those nails in the coffin type of things. It's a, a way to put things behind people. Uh, but it's the overall just, you know, again, like like BJ said, you know, whether it's Pericles or Plato, like some of these great philosophers of, of our day, again, why it's so important to be involved. And it doesn't take many people. I mean, we've talked about this so many times on the shows, spaces, you know, the 3%. It, it only takes a small and transigent irate minority in order to to really make change and when you're just spider-man memeing and everyone's like pointing at each other like oh well are you are you going to stand up and do something are you going to stand up and do something obviously the last four years there are many opportunities to do that i'm for myself pretty embarrassed as an american how a few people really kind of stood up uh still mind-blowing to me at this point but 
I think it was good in a way because a lot of people learned, you know, that we you need to stand. You have to be vocal. You have to be involved politically. You can't because, again, like a Craig, uh, not, not a Craig, but a Huddle Notch or a McCormick or people that are getting attacked. This this is going to happen many ways. I think there's a lot of ways that people will get attacked. This Then they fight you stage. Look, we're seeing the the bills like we just mentioned earlier. We're seeing lawfare. We're seeing, you know, direct attacks, indirect attacks. There's going to be things that we don't even think about at this point. A lot of most of us are good people. So we don't spend our time thinking as a criminal would or as a, a liar or a cheat. We don't we don't do that. Right. So we're going to get blindsided. We're going to have like this black swan of type of events where you kind of get blindsided or you realize maybe down the road a little bit like, oh, like, what is this? Like, this is a little different than I thought it was. So we all have to be on our toes. You have to coalesce as a community. We talk about this all the time as well is community is the number one aspect in a survival situation. So us coming together, coalescing Bitcoin conferences, community coming together on shows like Simply, uh, Simply Bitcoin, people in the chat, building those community of people is the biggest thing you can do and coming on spaces, whatever it is, because when you have that, that group of people that can stand up and be vocal, you know, you can, you can vote traditionally with the ammo box or the ballot box. And now we have the ways to do it with our wallets, with our feet and with our voice. We now have five ways we can really be voting. We didn't have all those ways. So now that's where we hope he doesn't, it doesn't get to the ammo box. You know, that's the last option. So can we, can we utilize these first couple, you know, our voice, the money, things of that nature to impose our will. Again, the right bar quote of politics is downstream from culture. Can we shift things and, and push back on that Overton window that keeps going to the, uh, the American left, I guess, the Marxist uh, way, that direction. Can we push back on that and start regaining some of that freedom, whether it's through the money or whether it's through people just learning these experiences of, of bad things happening. Unfortunately, my, my father always said pain is a great teacher. And he's the one that I learned from very early on from a young age, was always questioning the news, was always questioning everything and pointing out all the fallacies and the hypocritical things that were going on in legacy media or academia. He would study my textbook, you know, like whatever it was, he was he was like, what are they teaching you in school? What is going on? So I saw very early on, I was very lucky that I had that influence in my life, but not everyone does. Again, so it's how can we get into these communities? How can we get the younger generations involved? How can we do things that are going to start educating people? And again, the money, why we're all here, number one, to start defunding these centralized entities so they can we can defund these brainwashing apparatuses, whether it is legacy media or government-run schools, et cetera. Beautiful, beautiful, man. Uh, Brandon, guys, uh, drop dr sauce. Guys, you got to check out their, their space. Cases. You got to check out Political Bitcoin Hour. These are two, you know, intellectual heavyweights right now dropping so much sauce. So appreciate them coming on the on the show. Uh, guys, we are run, we are on, tight on time, but I do want to address the news. Opti, if you don't mind real quick uh, in terms of the, 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 the sailor stuff, and then we'll we'll transition to the culture segment to talk more about what these gentlemen are working on. So, uh, yeah, guys, look, uh, Michael Saylor continues his speculative attack on the dollar. Uh, and it's absolutely hilarious. I mean, it, it's hilarious in the sense of, let, let me tell you the story real quick. Let me break it down uh, because there's a series of events, right? So first, uh, MicroStrategy completes $800 million. Uh, I don't know what happened, Opti. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so uh, this was March 11th, 2024. Then a couple days later, uh, March 13th, 2024, MicroStrategy uh, announces proposed private offering of $500 million of convertible senior notes. And just to kind of simplify it, to kind of understand what is happening, here's our boy, uh, the Bitcoin therapist, drops amazing content on Twitter, by the way. Definitely recommend giving him a follow. And he said, Sailor found the infinite money glitch, the infinite Bitcoin loop. Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, debt, Bitcoin, wash and repeat. And this, this thing will go much higher. The next loop, Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, S&P, debt, Bitcoin. There is no top to this cycle. We go up forever. So the man is literally, and by the way, uh, I had I interviewed James Lavish yesterday, and he'll break down the technical details of how Michael Saylor, or the financial details of how Michael Saylor is actually doing this. But essentially, he's leveraging his company. His stock goes up in value. He borrows against it. Right. He raises more money to buy more Bitcoin. The Bitcoin goes up in value because MicroStrategy is holding so much Bitcoin. Their stock goes up in value and rinse and repeat. And the rates at which he's borrowing this money is tiny. Right. You're talking about like less than a percentage point. 
So like Sailor literally has hacked the system. Here's our boy, Nick Camp Mine, head of news at Bitcoin Magazine. He said, Sailor raised 800 million to buy more Bitcoin two days ago, went on Yahoo Finance, called people who save in fiat poor, and now he's raising another 500 million to buy more Bitcoin. What a legend. Here's the clip. <laughs> Because they expect well, because they want to sell it eventually, desirable. Michael. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people who are, uh, yes, sure, some people pass it on to their children. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. So let, I me, let me say it a different way. Okay. People that use fiat currency as a store of value, there's a name for them. We call them poor. After that interview, <laughs> the dude literally the, the next day was was like, all right, I'm just going to buy more Bitcoin. What an absolute Chad by the sailor. All right, guys, we are short on time. So I do want to hit the culture so that we give uh, these gentlemen plenty of time to talk about what they're working on, what their projects are. Uh, but before we jump into that, I do give a shout out to our sponsor, Kabim Rex, the most trusted place to buy, sell and host mining equipment to check out their Inventory, what you could do is you could scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you directly to their Telegram mar marketplace or you can connect with a member of their sales team. They make purchasing their products easy and transparent. You could also sell your mining equipment with them, access their vast network of domestic and international customers when you sell your mining equipment with Kaboom Racks. So guys, check out Kaboom Racks today. Go to kaboomracks.com or you could scan the QR code on your screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the culture. The Daily Culture. Ladies and gentlemen, like Brandon just said, we have 10 million people to orange pill. We need that intransigent minority in the United States. Bitcoin evangelism by Brian DeMint is an absolute beast of a resource for orange pilling, no coiners and all coiners alike. This is a book for Bitcoiners who know Bitcoin, but have a hard time explaining it to their friends. It's a book for Bitcoiners who are trying to explain Bitcoin only to all coiners. This book will arm you with the tools to convince that aunt, that uncle, that friend that just that for some reason, they're still listening to Elizabeth Warren and Peter Schiff. This tool will arm you with the knowledge and the tools in order to orange pill them. Maybe if they work at Goldman Sachs, then it's a losing battle and it's not worth it. But the vast majority of people don't fit into that category. Check out Bitcoin Evangelism today. Scan the QR code or check the link in the video description. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the culture. And uh, we have a crazy, crazy as in crazy good guest today. We have the legendary BJ Ditcher. And of course, Brandon, BJ, what are you up to these days, man? You so you wrote, you know, you wrote the book. I know you're making content these days. What's up, man? How's life? Yeah, well, the book is important because there's two chapters in here, uh, chapter 29 and chapter 30. Chapter 29, this was Bitcoin's moment. And chapter 30, Bitcoin proves its power. And later on this year at the Canadian Bitcoin Conference, myself and Caribou, who was the one who was distributing the Bitcoin directly to the truckers, will be together on a panel for the first time. So if you're in Montreal, Canada, come join. Uh, my Substack is growing, bjdictor.substack.com. Obviously, I talk, to, talk a lot about uh, politics and about Bitcoin, trying to bridge that gap and bringing people together. I uh, do a lot of radio stuff and, uh, yeah, all, all over the place, man. Honkingforfreedom.com where, where you can get the uh, book. And the last thing, by the way, I just want to mention this very important uh, point because Brandon touched on it when he said, this sort of stuff is not going to stop. You know, before the trucker convoy, and regardless of your opinions politically, Abramovich had his soccer team and all his assets seized and stolen by the UK government. Then the trucker protest happened. We had all our bank accounts and credit cards and lines of credit were frozen. And then six weeks later, Lula did the exact same to the truckers in Brazil when they protested. And after that, the Iranian mullahs froze the bank accounts. The people who fund Hamas, they froze the bank accounts of peaceful protesters in Iran that wanted uh, some greater freedoms, right? Last year, we had a liquid liquidity issue in TD Bank that everybody in government and all cabinets know about but are keep trying to keep quiet and hush-hush. And right now, if you go on to Reddit, you're going to see all sorts of comments about problems with transactions all over the world that are being frozen, 
uh, for whatever reason. We don't know if it's a liquidity issue or it's a censorship, censorship issue. So this is not going to stop. This is why you need to start to be vocal. And the best way to be vocal is to start preaching about the importance of what, what I call the freedom, con the, the freedom protocol, which is Bitcoin. And that's how I try to orange pill with people with it. So don't, don't remain silent. Speak up. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautifully said, BJ. And look, it, let's let's talk about this concept because you buried the lead there a little bit, right? Which is the aspect of bridging the gap between politics and Bitcoin, right? Uh, you know, I think it was Brandon that said that that famous quote from Plato, right? Like you might not think that politics is important, but, uh, you know, like and I say this all the time, you know, and, and Bitcoiners have this this sense of, you know, like, Bro, you know, I got my private keys. I got self-custody. I'm okay. All right, guys, <laughs> things could get way worse. Um, you know, Venezuela, where my family's originally from, you know, it went from one of the most prosperous nations to, uh, you know, within 20 years of collectivism. You, mm -hmm. you could say socialism if you want to be blunt. Um, yeah. You know, completely destroyed the society, right? Uh, and again, the idea that, to think that that can't happen where you are is absurdly naive. Um, so it's not just a one tool fix all, it's a multitude of things. And if you don't get up and speak up and say something, uh, you know, Schultz and Itzen has so many quotes re regarding what I just said. Uh, maybe I could find one before I pass it on to oh, BJ. Bro, Nico, Nico, just to add to your point, look, Caribou had, we raised a total of 21 Bitcoin for the the, uh, the trucker protest. And I believe approximately 17 was distributed directly to the truckers. But the government managed to, to uh, gain access and to seize the remaining five. Do you know how they did that? They had 15 officers raid his house at gunpoint from both federal and provincial police officers, took his computer, took his phones, and demanded he surrendered a seed phrase. The guy's never been in trouble in his life. He freaked. He panicked. He was afraid. Yeah, and, and I don't, I, I don't fault him. It's, it's a very difficult thing. It's very easy to say, "Oh, the government's going to come in. I don't care. I'm going to tell them to f off." Well, yeah, you, you tell, you try that when you have a warrant for your arrest and guns in front of you, and twenty police cruisers uh, in front of your house that are going to drag you away. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, scenario to actually be experiencing that so we can all pretend to be tough guys but the way to push back is to push back now now not when they're raiding your house push back now get more people on bitcoin and start advocating to the people who do hold political power like i've orange pilled a number of politicians quietly behind the scenes so i know they at least get it do as much of that as possible because if not you never know when those 15 officers can come to your house a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, you, 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 you have to, you have to stand up. You have to stand up. You have to say something because when it gets too late, like when it becomes too late, um, it, 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 the, the only, the only, uh, kind of way out of that, it, 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 it's a kinetic option, right? That's right. Or you leave. Um, most people don't choose the kinetic option. Most people leave, but what happens when there isn't anywhere else to leave to, right? right? Me and Opti make this joke all the time about the you U.S. You make a joke, um, but <laughs> it's it in a way it's not really a joke. In in a way, we're being you know dead serious, which is we're gonna try to hold it down in the U.S. The U.S. has a, a lot of things going for it, like the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the individual sovereignty of the states. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if the U.S. goes down the collectivist path. You know, we 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 joke about it. We say we're gonna rebrand the show. We're gonna call it, call it Simple, Simplemente Bitcoin, and we're gonna move to El Salvador, <laughs> right? The land of freedom, right? Um, and hope, right? So I mean, look, I I am you know in a way like you know we are kind of saying this in, in you know perhaps maybe not a light lighthearted manner, but take it seriously. Like take what BJ uh, says seriously. Look at his experiences. My buddy Ben, which I'm doing the show with tonight, BTC Sessions, he was part of that. He was kind of, uh, you know, he was call, caught in the, in the, you know, tyrannical net of what happened in Canada during the truckers' protest. Uh, so to think that this can't happen here 
uh, you're 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 absolutely kidding yourself. We got another super chat from Lawrence. Uh, so shout out Lawrence, thank you. Appreciate the super chat. Says great show, gents. Keep up the good work. Uh, let's all fight the good fight. Thank you, Lawrence. Really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna pass it on to Brandon. Brandon, what are your thoughts on uh, what BJ was just saying? Why are politics and Bitcoin important? Oh boy, uh, we need another whole entire show for that. Um, you know, like we did, we mentioned the the quotes, Pericles, you know, Plato, you know, it's it's part of life. In, in government, it's going to be here whether we like it or not, whether, you know, we have hyper Bitcoinization, it's going to be here for a while regardless. Like this whole system needs to be defunded and it's not just going to go away overnight. I always think about the hippie bubble. You know, we're, we're run by the, the gerontocracy, the 60s, 70 and up class. They're in every walk of life, obviously, whether it's academia, politics. And, you know, they're, they're sunsetting and it's going to really flip a lot of things. And a lot of what we talk about now probably won't be a thing, I would imagine, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now. But we still have to make it, though. You know, we still have to get there. We, we can't give away everything and just sit back and do nothing. And that's that's why it, it can be anything. It, it can be voting. It can be getting vocal, starting a blog. It could be going to one, you know. Uh, PTA meetup, you know, it could be one local, you know, township meeting a year, you know, and if, if just 1%, 3% of people did those things and all, all of us doing our own little things, you know, society changes very quickly because now you're getting pushback. People, you know, for decades, no one was pushing back. It was, you know, God loved the, the older generations, right? Our, our parents, our grandparents, great grandparents, you know, I'm in my, my mid thirties and it's, you know, they were, my grandfather admitted to me, he was like, well, I just, you know, he flipped like 20 years ago and, and he was very, you know, um, you know, liberal democratic, you know, the best way to say it, but you know, he saw the writing on the wall, he was in unions. And so he was just told what to do, but he even told me like, Hey, I just, they, it was handshake society. Like I didn't, who would think that someone would just be lying to you? We just assumed that people had our best interests. Like we were Americans. Like we just, that's just what we did forever. And so you have this, this process of the frog in the boiling pot for a hundred plus years and people at work to, to try to change society. And then you have the just collective malaise, right? When you're destroying the money and, you know, BJ, you talk about this all the time, right? But it's, you know, people try to search for conspiracies or things that are going on when a lot of times it's just centralized, huge masses of people or centralized governments doing dumb and dumber things again spider-man memeing like well you got it no well, you got it and then this person's taking from the coffers there and then that person's skimming off the top and then it just builds on itself and it's been doing that for 110 years and here we are so that's why it's again the political bitcoin hour what we started doing there to try to bridge this gap a little bit with bitcoiners obviously bitcoin trading cards again aladdin started that to trojan horse you know people and to incept this into people's minds because no one wants to talk about this stuff again a lot of bitcoiners don't people you know libertarians they don't want to talk about it and and for whatever reason we need to uh get into that conversation and and understand that this could change overnight this is we're not asking someone to get into a bodybuilding competition like hey you gotta have a six pack in the next like year or two that takes a long time it's, it's a decision. It's overnight. This could change. And we accept Bitcoin. It is the money. And it's a decision. You know, it's it's your higher powers, your your brain using the, the greatest gift we all have. And it's starting to get people to understand those things. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do with political Bitcoin hour. It's what we're trying to do with the, the trading cards. We want to be the entertainment arm. Yeah. And, and whether it's bringing mascots, bringing things to, uh, you know, the huge partnerships. We just partnered with Fanatics Live. Um, so there's going to be huge things. We're trying to get to the normies. You know, we're trying to get to what what are the things we can do to get to the normies? You know, like you said earlier, Nico, we're in our echo chamber and we've got more people coming in, fortunately, now that are starting to because the bull market's starting. But we need to keep expanding, keep growing because we've got to minimize the collateral damage from here. This crosses a little rickety bridge from this fiat matrix we're in to that hyper Bitcoinization. And there's a rickety old bridge. I always think of Jurassic Park three when they're caught in the pterodactyl cage and they're crossing that little bridge and you got to go one by one. Each person has to cross and we got to get to the other side somehow. And we want to minimize the collateral damage. We want to minimize the martyrs that are taken along the way. It's up to us in order to do that while things are still somewhat sane. I, 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 hesitate in saying that a little bit but this could get much crazier if if we uh if we, if we don't be careful but that's why again like the cards they talk about taxation as theft they talk about the Bretton woods agreement they talk about government uh not being able to stop bitcoin and all these things centralization decentralization the schools aren't doing it you know people aren't doing it anywhere the legacy media is not doing it so how are we going to do it well it's on us it's all, on all of our shoulders Amen to that, man. Beautifully, beautifully put. Opti, you want to chime into the, you want to chime into Yeah, this yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think everyone knows my take on this. I, I've been very blackpilled in regards to politics and only after getting involved with Simply Bitcoin has it started to dawn on me, like how important 
of a fight it actually is. And of course, like I always say, the classic meme of the best way to vote is either with your money or your feet. And even though Nico says uh, we're going to El Salvador, I, I, I just I have the thought in my head of like, man, if America falls, like there's nowhere else to run. So we got to hold it down. And on that point, I want to ask Brandon and BJ, like, what is your advice for people out there? What what should people be doing, in your opinion, right now to actually further the Bitcoin movement? The first thing is, especially when you get into political framing and discussions, uh, don't be so combative. And you're not red or blue, liberal, Democrat, Republican or whatever. You're orange. Your team orange, which means you can work and find the positive attributes of people on all sides. What you aren't is a collectivist. You're an individualist. And take your patience with people. You know, there's some people are predisposed to get involved with party politics, which is horrible. <laughs> so if you can avoid that, uh, try to. But some people are just predisposed to that. They're very good organizers. They're very good at bringing people together. And those people should probably get involved in the party structure. But you know how we gain our freedom? Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to your people at work. And be patient with them. You have to take a long strategic approach with them. It's not going to be one conversation. It's not going to be one statement. It's going to be through repetition, many, many months when they're primed and they're ready to talk about Bitcoin and freedom. That's your opportunity. Just be patient with people. And if we all do that, then we'll get somewhere. I gave, I tell this story often about during the lockdowns in Canada, which were quite authoritarian. And I used to do this. I never put on a mask. Only if like a, you know, a part-time employee asked me, it's not their fault, right? So I'd go in the coffee shop, my local coffee shop. I remember this one time. I'm in line. I get my coffee uh, or I'm waiting for my coffee at the other end of the bar. And some woman comes up to me who's, you know, five foot nothing with a mask on. And she says, you're not wearing a mask. And as she, I was about to respond, she says, no, 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 no. I don't want to wear a mask either. And I said, then take it off. I said, for two years, I have not once walked into a place with a mask. And every time I notice the same thing, everybody in line watches to see if I get attacked, harassed, arrested, or the Gestapo comes. And after a minute and a half, they realize that no one's going to control me. You know what happens? One by one, they start taking it off. People just need somebody to stick their neck out just a little bit to be a little bit more of a leader and a little bit more sane. And you know what? The rest of them will come in line the same thing with Bitcoin. And for Bitcoin, all we're giving the world is positivity. It doesn't matter where you are on the political spectrum. If you want to help poor people in the third world, or you want to, if you're more on the investment side and business side in the developing world, doesn't matter. Bitcoin has freedom for everybody. And once you, once you message around something that's positive, that brings people together, it's so easy to get them on board. Amen. Love it, DJ. Love it. Beautifully Brandon, said. jump in on that. What's your thoughts? What can we do? Well, getting involved, you know, locally, obviously the decentralized nature of America and how we were founded is the big thing. And again, you know, I know all the four of us have talked about this many times, you know, over the last couple of years, but truly, you know, just, you know, like I said earlier, getting, going to one meeting, you know, and not everyone has to do it, right? If that's your thing, great, go do that. If, if that's your thing is to go create a blog or a YouTube channel, you know, writing, you know, audio, visual, whatever it is. But the more we can overwhelm the system, you know, and, and Nico touched on this earlier as well, and it's the 10 million Bitcoiners, the 3%. If we can get to that, you really start changing the culture because politics is truly downstream. And for people to sit back, I know it's funny like you're watching some of the comments. You know, again, like I, my first foray I, in a way was, like I said, my father was very active and he taught me. I, I was born in 87. And so I'm, I was probably about 10 years later, about 97 or so. I My first real like seeing like a libertarian like it, my dad was a libertarian but someone else that and, and they didn't vote so my my dad voted but my this guy that was a friend of ours or someone i played hockey with it was his father and he didn't vote and i like he has a 10 year old that didn't make sense to me i was like why why did he not vote and i would ask my dad and stuff and he, he's like honestly son like i i don't know you know, and, you know, and there's part of it, you can say like, well, your vote doesn't matter and things like that and whatever. But it's more of the uh, people seeing you go do things, right? If you're just sitting at your house, right? It's it's the act of actually going and doing things, people seeing you out and about. It's the, the very, you know, you, we discount like, hey, would you go do today? Well, I, I went and voted or hey, I went to this meeting or hey, I went to this town hall or whatever it is. All those things build on each other. And when 
you know, and I, I think about there was the Chicago Blackhawks again, hockey guy, but they were they weren't on TV for years. The Rocky Wirtz or old owner was not. They didn't put them on TV. They're like, well, if we don't put them on TV, then the people show up at the game at the United Center. No one went. You know, it's out of sight, out of mind. And when you're just like, ah, I don't need to do it or, you know, ah, it doesn't matter. Well, then that's that's the perception. You know, one of our higher faculties is perception. You create that story. Life is just a collection of eight billion stories we're all telling ourselves. So whatever you tell yourself, well, that's reality. That's all there is to it. So if you th believe that that's the case, well, then that's the case. If you don't believe, if you think you have a, 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 a choice to go do something about it and actually make a change, one person can make a change, which they can. Then you go start doing whatever it is. Your brain starts finding ways to get involved and start doing things. Obviously, the best way is to do it. Start local or you know do the things you can do around you. But I think to me, that's that's the biggest thing. It could be, you know, again, tuning into Simply Bitcoin, tuning into a political Bitcoin hour, you know, get, getting some cards, passing them out. You know, it just anything helps because all those actions lead up and we we've been compounding the wrong way the overton window has been shifting so far for so long the other way we need to start taking these positive steps and let those start compounding on each other over time love it beautiful beautiful love said it. yeah get involved take action take agency uh you know this is about winning over the hearts and minds of individuals and bringing them together and getting them to understand that what BJ was saying is absolutely spot on. This is not left versus right. It's not green. I mean, sorry, it's not blue versus red. Uh, it is the party of green, the party of nihilism, war, slavery, um, versus the party of orange, the party of optimism, peace, prosperity, opportunity, and optimism, um, and opti. Uh, so uh, vote opti 2024. Uh, no, but yeah, like that that's really what people have to understand because a lot of their, you know, a lot of the political like division right now is if you really identify the root cause, you could you can say, OK, the long the long walk through the institutions. Right. You know, the kind of like the takeover. But I think it kind of really stems down to like if you really, really break it down to a root cause is um, the fact that there's a bureaucratic elite that have the privilege and the ability to create money for free that everyone else has to work for. It's a misaligned incentive structure society that gets a tremendous amount of power to the political class. Um, and they don't have to really do good by their constituents. Uh, they're not incentivized to, they're incentivized to just get as close as humanly possible to the money spigot, right? Uh, this is what the separation of money and state is all about. This is what the peaceful Bitcoin revolution is all about. And all you have to do to participate, just buy Bitcoin, earn Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin, and take that said Bitcoin into self-custody. You're a revolutionary, whether you realize it or not. Like, it's that simple, right? And if we get that message out, um, like Brandon said, if we get that intransigent minority of 10 million Bitcoiners in the United States, it's going to like if they're going to try to pass any type of anti Bitcoin legislation it's going to become like the gun laws, man. Try to pass a gun law in the U.S. It is impossible. Why? Because there's so many gun owners. Right. So even though they get all riled up, it's like if a huge percentage of the population, you know, is, is, is owning guns, then it's like good luck trying to pass a law. Uh, you know, we had, uh, I forget what his name was, Opti. We had this amazing guest earlier on this week, uh, and uh, he's a cannabis grower, right? And he was talking about Eric essentially uh, Eric, and he was talking about essentially how, you know, the government tried to force a lot of these, uh, you know, cannabis producers in uh, California to register with the government. And, uh, you know, out of the 12,000, only 153 registered and then the government had to change the law. Right. So, look, guys, it, it might seem like this is this monolithic, you know, creature, this 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 system that can't be defeated. But, you know, all it takes is just strong minded individuals to stand up and say, look, enough is enough. Integrity is important. Honesty is important. Principles are important. Uh, sound money is important. The truth is important and uh, things will change. So I do want to give uh, BJ and Brandon opportunity to uh, give uh, some closing thoughts for the audience. And uh, if you guys want to plug any things, I'm going to start with you, BJ. Yeah, a couple of white pills, you know, just to tag on to what you just said. Uh, the first thing is, you know, I, I ran for parliament in Canada in 2015. So I know all our parliamentarians. I know how the entire system works. And uh, Paul, Political parties are like cults, except they're cults where everybody's trying to stab each other in the back. So it's very easy to divide and conquer within the political structure. The other thing is we often talk about some of the wealthiest people in the world 
And we do sometimes fall into the trap of collectivizing them under this postmodern worldview that, oh, there's a small group of people and they control everything and whatever. Uh, that has not been my experience. There's been there's a lot of very wealthy people who have competing interests and are competing with each other. But one of the most fascinating things I ever I ever realized by meeting some of these people, you know what they are? They're fueled by fear because they are also afraid of the system collapsing. And many of them are trying to figure out what can I do to prevent this entire system from collapsing uh, and where can I throw money? And sometimes they get taken advantage of. Sometimes they're crazy. They put it in the wrong direction. But a lot of those people are just trying to keep this all together because they often have more to lose than we do. So I, I think there is hope. This is why I'm always positive about the future and bringing people together and so hopeful that people like Sailor, people of you know well means have gotten into the Bitcoin space, whether it's Paul Tudor Jones and other people, that they're now understanding that our system as it is cannot continue. And there is this protocol that none of them and nobody and no government controls. And over the long term, that's going to allow us to achieve gr greater freedoms. And I look on the political thing, the political spectrum, the last thing, I look to Argentina and Javier Millet, knowing that Stephen Hicks, one of my podcasters, has known him for many, many years, has shared a stage with him for many, many years. And Argentina is left with no options, that they have no option other than to cut the size of their government significantly and right the ship. And they have been working since 2010 to get somebody like Millet with his policies into power, and they finally achieved it. And if he is successful, I know the lobby class around the world, because I know how it works, the lobby class that influences political parties around the world will see there's money in going with a more libertarian perspective moving forward. We just have to show them that Bitcoin is part of that vision and that will become the future for humanity. Beautiful, beautiful. Ours. Vote BJ uh, Ditcher for, uh, <laughs> for, 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 uh, for Canadian president of... Uh, no, no, no. Just buy a copy of Honking for Freedom. Oh, you honking can do, for Freedom .com. Go to honkingforfreedom.com. Opti, if you could pull up on screen. Brandon, last message to the audience. Uh, what would you say? Yeah, thanks, Nico. Thanks for having us on, guys. Um, you know, someone in the comments again said, you know, the, the Lord will take care of of the, the evil ones and, and some of these tyrants, whatever. And and that is true. That's true in a way. And I thought it's a great comment, but, you know, he will take care of those people. But I do believe and, you know, in my opinion that, you know, some of us get revealed. Wait, truth. Wait, wait. Probably I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject here. OK, I'm going to interject here. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry for interrupting you, Brandon. Very good. The Lord gives you the power and the agency for you to take action to do something about it. But if you're just going to look at the sky and expect things to fall on you, that's never going to happen. All right. I just yes. wanted to say that. Yeah. No, no, that's and that's that's exactly where I was going. You know, God doesn't do things for us. He does things to and through us. And that's it's, that's exactly where I was going with this. And, you know, he reveals truth to Well, I, I think everyone if you wanted but many, some of us probably a lot of us here are the ones that are seeing that truth and my fear you know is that the ones that have been revealed allow that truth you have an obligation in in my perspective to do something about that i fear getting to the gate someday at the end of my life and and saying being asked what did you do with that knowledge that i gave you with that truth that i gave you that's what drives me that's the scariest thing in the world to me to be revealed this this darkness that's happening but have the, and have that truth and not do anything about it it's kind of you know the talents in a way from the bible but um you know again with bitcoin trading cards we're, we're trying to push the envelope like i said be the you know how can we fight against this and so it's the the red pill and orange pill ethos that our the company there is driven by which is one of the reasons that i, I joined it almost a year and a half ago right when they, when aladdin started it so you know we have kids you know there's some that don't have kids there's a huge group you know of, of a community now five six hundred people in our telegram group and all kinds of pack stackers so um it's an educational project but we need, you know, everyone's help. We need to get the the Genesis cards we have, the cheaper version of the cards, to get spread to education, and we need to get the inventory gone this year, so that way we can do some of the other really cool things we have going on. We just partnered with uh, Svetsky 
Alex Svetsky for his Spirit of Satoshi, uh, his AI project that's going on. So we just launched that. Series 3 coming up, obviously. And the conference packs, like unconfiscatable packs that Nico was just in a few months ago. And uh, and they're very collectible, too, which is a, really, a nice side benefit uh, if you want to trade them for sats and things of that nature. Uh, so that's, you know, the website is btc-tc.com. So you can go check them out there. And then the last thing I'll say is Political Bitcoin Hour. Again, we're going to continue ramping this up as well in the coming months and as things roll forward and you know turn into a YouTube show and, and numerous things as we go here. But it's an, it's an outlet for Bitcoiners who want to talk politics and talk about things we talked about today, but maybe don't feel totally welcome in some other Bitcoin spaces for, for whatever reason, just bridging this, <laughs> bridging this world from the fiat matrix to hyper Bitcoinization. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Completely agree. Uh, all I want to say after those rants, sorry, Nika, sorry, Nika. All I want to say is let's go. I, I think I start, I'm starting to see a halo over Opti's head. Saint Opti. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh, guys. Oh, only oh, a sinner man. can be redeemed, Nico. A anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for tuning oh, in to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. Uh, this is uh, BJ Ditcher. Go check out his, his book. Uh, he's the author of Honking for Freedom. And of course, we had Brandon on the show today. He's the head of marketing for BTC Trading Cards. Go check them out. They're awesome. And uh, of course, go check out their new spaces, the Political Bitcoin Hour. Uh, I think it's so important. Uh, you can you can pretend, you know, the the, the hundred pound gorilla in the room <laughs> is not there, but it's surely there. So, anyways, guys, uh, definitely go check out their spaces. Check out these awesome Bitcoiners and uh, friends of Simply Bitcoin. We appreciate you guys. Uh, smash the like button. Consider subscribing if you feel like we provided you value. But the number one thing you you can do to push the peaceful Bitcoin revolution is share this content. In fact, share all Bitcoin content, share Bitcoin art, share Bitcoin music. Uh, Brandon said it, and I've said it many times, the Breitbart quote, uh, politics is downstream from culture. We want to win this. It's a culture war, but not the one that you're thinking of. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a culture of uh, waking up people to the reality that, guys, it's not left versus right. Uh, it's green versus orange. The money is broken. You fix the money, you fix the world. All right, love it. Love all you guys. We'll be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. Uh, stay tuned for Russin and uh, John's video. It's going to be dropping in a couple hours. Simply Bitcoin Originals. And I will be doing a uh, Simply Sessions tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you'll have plenty of Bitcoin content in the meantime. We'll be back tomorrow, guys. Take it easy. Peace out, everybody. Episode was brought to you by BitcoinWell.com, a Bitcoin only platform on a mission to enable financial independence. <laughs>